free speech, Alex Jones, social media, no filters. We can say anything we want to as many people as we want in America today. But what's the right answer? What are the answers to the question about how far we can take our First Amendment rights to free speech? We're gonna look at some of the cases today and we're gonna answer the question, is there a limit? Should there be a limit? Dare we offer a limit to free speech, our rights? And who's gonna decide that at the end of the day? Most Americans, if you asked them, would tell you that they believe the fundamental right in all of those is the right to expression, the right to free speech. It's fundamental that Americans are best known of all things for being able to say whatever they want without any consequence or fear. But in reality, do we really believe it's best not to have any limitation at all on free speech? I'll leave that to you, but let me next give you some examples of the restrictions that we already all agree with with respect to the right to speak our mind. The interesting thing is that while most Americans, if you ask them the question, is there any limit to free speech, would say, no, there's no limit. We all, when we think about it, would know that there is and there are limits to our ability to express ideas, concepts, thoughts, and not have a consequence. To protect the public from bad actors, there are restrictions on free speech, false advertising, defamation, obscenity, a call to lawlessness or violence. Those are a few of the examples that I could give you that you'd say, oh yeah, the light just went on. There is a limitation to free speech. Defamation, for example. You can't go around speaking about a specific person and saying, oh, that person robbed a bank last Friday. That person has herpes. That person is immoral or unfaithful to his wife, unless it's true. Because as we know, the truth is always a defense to, to defamation. But again, defamation is a restriction on free speech, which has a consequence if you commit it. The Supreme Court has passed obscenity restrictions. You can't publish certain statements, pictures, depictions. Going back to defamation, if you make a statement of fact and you publish it to other people, to third parties, and it's not truthful, and it's injurious to someone's reputation, you can be held liable for damages and punitive damages. In, well, we know from the Alex Jones case, hundreds of millions of dollars for that false intentional speech that's defamatory. Now, in order to demonstrate how truly difficult this discussion really is at the end of the day, at its core, at its root, at its fundamental constitutional basis, we have to go back. We've now talked about you know, defamation, um, false advertising, um, fraud, those types of things that, that limit the, the types of speech we can be involved in. But then we go back to the constitutional analysis by the US Supreme Court in three different cases, which suggest that there are broad parameters they're broad opportunities for people to express what they really feel and what they really believe is true. In the case of Tinker v. Des Moines, the Supreme Court said students do not shed their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate. In other words, students should be free to express themselves and their feelings and their thoughts in school without any consequence and without any restriction or limitation. In the case of Texas v. Johnson, the Supreme Court said, quote, the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. Coming back to social media and the types of expressions that we can make that are guaranteed by our rights under the Constitution for free speech, even if something is offensive or distasteful, doesn't necessarily mean that it's prohibited speech. Um, like defamation, which is actually injurious in a statement of fact, as I said before. So as we consider where the line is in terms of what we can and can't say, what is acceptable and what's not acceptable, we have to keep in mind that just the fact that we're offensive or disagreeable is not the line of demarcation as found and held by the United States Supreme Court itself. Thirdly, another decision, Virginia, West Virginia Board of Education v. Barnett, 
The quote was, fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. Again, we have to keep in mind as we consider this free speech issue that the rights that we have as people, as human rights, are indivisible from who we are. In other words, the Constitution doesn't grant those rights, according to the Supreme Court, but merely protects the fundamental inherent rights we have to expression. So we have to, as we consider what is acceptable speech, what is uh, consequence causing speech versus what is free speech without a consequence, we have to bear in mind that it's, it's not a bright line. And many times it's a slippery slope, which means that if you come down hard in one area and you get it wrong, you can lead to even further problems as you try to put shackles around the concept of free speech. And it's a difficult question, and I'm glad we're talking about it today. It's a, it's a question that Alex Jones learned the hard way, that you can go too far if you act like you know a fact. You intentionally damage people, whether he did or not intentionally is up to the jury, right? They decided that he did and that he was liable for hundreds of millions of dollars in damages for what? for expressing himself in a way that he thought was lawful under the laws where he did it and under the Constitution of the United States of America. Whether he got it wrong, whether he got it right, it really doesn't matter to us at this point because a jury decided and that will go through the legal process. But the impact on all of us is real. As we consider the unfiltered ability that we all have now through the social media to say whatever we want to say and we have to ask ourselves, is there a consequence or no consequence for saying what we want to say anytime we want to say it, anywhere we want to say it? In the context of all of this, people say, well, wait a second, what about Twitter and Donald Trump? All of these private companies that may say, oh, I don't want that type of speech on my platform. And while the United States Supreme Court has made rulings about online uh, speech, private companies still maintain the right because they're not government to regulate speech and to prohibit some types of speech on their platforms. Freedom of speech on the internet. Reno v. ACLU gave the legal precedent for free speech online. However, private companies may still ban speech they deem inappropriate. To kind of recap, we've talked about how our government in the constitution protects free speech where the government can't infringe on our right to speak. And, and we've talked about very minor exceptions, fraud, false advertising, those types of things. In other countries, they don't have the same rights and protections that we have here in America, where the government itself is policing speech. Like for example, the speech codes abroad, the EU hate speech code of conduct, for example, which again, by definition, hate speech is something that is enforced and regulated in the European Union. Uh, Anti-Islam speech bans across the Middle East, where in that region, you have governmental entities that are really policing the ability to speak your mind. Or in, the government protest is banned in China, where the government is sitting on people who are exercising a fundamental human right to free speech. So in America, we have a situation where the government is letting us say what we want pretty much, but speech is being policed more and more by the private sector, by companies who have platforms that might regulate free speech, or by individuals who might take offense to a defamatory comment and sue you in court to enforce their right to be protected from irresponsible speech. In any event, we see that there are alarming questions that are starting to kind of foment as we get into this whole topic of speech, protected speech, what is appropriate, not appropriate in this new world of ours, where because of social media, we really don't have filters filtering any kind of limit to what we may or may not say to the whole world, basically free of cost. So as we consider where we go from here, we have to ask ourselves, should there be more limits on the right to free speech? Is the private sector the appropriate place to regulate that speech? Does the government need to be more involved in policing free speech? I'm not going to get into what the right answer is, not sure there is a right answer, except to say that we need to be careful in America 
about what we say, how we say it, and be sure not to injure people intentionally or the consequences could be very grave as Alex Jones has now learned. Early in my career, I had the blessing of serving in the state legislature for three terms. And oftentimes before the debate on the floor, we didn't really know where we came down on a particular issue as we tried very hard to set a correct policy in the laws that we made for the state. I hope that this exercise, as we've talked about the fundamental right of free speech, the harm and damage that can be caused to private citizens if people are abusing their free speech rights, whether the government or private companies or individuals should police the expressions that people make on this unfiltered platform, for lack of a better word, that we call the internet today and social media. Those are questions that I thought were worthy of our contemplation and consideration, much as the legislature would debate and contemplate matters of policy that they make. But I will make one thing clear. Just like when I served in the legislature and we considered very important weighty issues that were very important to us, this issue of speech and how we behave in the public forum with drastic and dramatic consequences based on what we say is worthy of our thoughtful consideration and debate as society. And I hope you will take the opportunity to consider where you stand on these issues. Should there be limits on free speech? Who should be limiting those expressions, if anyone? Should there be any accountability at all to our right to express ideas and thoughts? Um, should there be damages awarded when we intentionally misuse that process and injure other people? Those are questions that deserve our attention, our consideration, our thinking, and hopefully down road, we can solve the questions and be responsible in our use of our right, our fundamental right to engage in free speech and expression. Thank you for watching and engaging in this important topic debate about free speech rights. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure you watch this next video.